Okay, my friends. Quickie a shocker du jour, a heart in Libya. Somebody sent me this today. Freaked me out. This is a van. This is a heart. I'm almost certain. Now, this is the central part of the heart, and this is like a tissue pattern. I'll show you. Now, look at this. You see this around the outside? All the way around the outside. Look at this pattern. See it blocky, 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 blocky. All the way wrapping around. And then you have that white layer. And what is that all about? And what are all these little red stripes coming out of here? Yikes. And look it up here. Look at that thing. What the heck is that? Now, there's something else to look at that most people are going to miss. This right here. Now, why do I say take a look at that? <clears throat> well, blood makes things grow very, very well. And you can see there's a little circle of blood here. Now, why is this dark? And then this is so bright, brilliantly red. Why is the difference? Inside of a heart, you have vein blood, which is black almost. It's dark. And then you have the very highly oxygenated blood, which is very, very red. And you have all these blood vessels running all over. Let me show you what a heart looks like in actuality. But remember this. All the way around, all the way around, you have these little blocky things. You see this? These are all little blocky things all the way around. You see them? All the way around the heart which is heart muscle. They're called sarcomeres. And here they are right here. Uh, where'd you go, sarcomeres? Where are you? There you are, right here. This is what they look like. And they pinch and they, all day long. Or you stop pumping blood, and that's not a good thing. You know, if you want to continue your existence. Now, so here we see the heart. Now look closely at this. And don't forget that bottom little spot. I'm going to show you that. We're going to look around at this blocky stuff here, which is the sarcomeres, which is the... This is the interior of the heart. And there's always a spot right at the top where all the plumbing comes together. <laughs> and, and it's almost like you could take the cap off it. And um, that's right up here. That's where all the plumbing comes together at the top. Now, don't forget all of these little blood vessels and all that intricacy. Now, what do we see in the heart? We see the same stuff. You see the little blood vessels? And you see all the intricacy of everything? And then you see, the, don't forget that spot. That's going to be important to remember. That's a really very cool feature. And here it is on uh, uh, the heart. Right there. You see that? That's going to be the spot right there. That's where the blood is at the very bottom. There's a real bloody spot. And that's hanging right over the edge of the heart. You see it? Isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, it's, as far as I could determine, that's exactly what we got here. Remember I said there's a spot right here? That's where, and I had a guy, well, I'll show you. You see, that is a friend of mine, Phil Harris. He went out, in 15 minutes, I made him a challenge. I said, you go out and see if you can find a mud fossil. In 15 minutes, you can't, you tell me. He found this in less than 15 minutes. He saw a red spot on the side of a big stone. He whacked it with a hammer, and it split right across the plumbing. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. And it was wet. It was wet with red blood inside. Now, watch this. After an hour or two, this is what happened to it. You see, it started to to um, to deoxygenate, and it went down into the black state. See how it was red before, real red and wet. And this is the plumbing. All the top of the heart has all of that stuff plumbing in it. And he just popped it, and it cracks right along that seam. All right, basically, it's right across that seam right there. You get some real red blood. You get some black blood. You get some yellow blood. It's all mixed. 
because it's it's mixing back and forth between the vein side and the artery side. And I believe this is right up in the area where it's um that's where it would be. That's the bottom where that artery comes wrapping around there. And that's where the plumbing would be and there's a big some artery or a uh, uh, vein over there. That's a big vein. And um I don't know what else is in that area. I'm trying to get the hold of the people to, uh, and I did, to um, see if I can get them to, because he's got a, whole, a ton of other stuff too. But I would like them to do a little research in this area. I'd love to get somebody helping with the research in this area. But anyway, that's, um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that is a heart. All right, now don't tell me there's no, no possibility that a heart could be that size. That isn't even big all right, look at this. This is the breast of a well-proportioned woman. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly what it is. It's out in Utah or Arizona or somewhere. And here's what the breasts look like. It's the same exact same thing. That's exactly what it is. And there's all those finely sculpted muscle fibers of connective tissue, which I just showed you. It has eroded. All the fleshy, red fleshy stuff goes. Connective tissue is what holds you together. It connects everything together. That's what stays. That stuff is tough. This is just amazing stuff, but it's real. Here's the outside of a stomach. Here's this guy walking on the outside of a stomach. I think this is in what they call vermilion cliffs. I'm going to show you some more stuff. That's and that's real. This is it's totally a hundred percent easily validated. Look it up Vermilion Cliffs You see that that's exactly what you would expect to find in a stomach area. This is the stomach Outside of the stomach and Inside it's completely saturated with red blood because that's how you transfer the contents of your stomach uh, Okay, this I believe is an intestinal area because of, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's segmented like an intestine would be, but because of this extreme amount of red blood, which is where you <laughs> absorb all things through your intestines, the stomach would have a similar situation, but it does, it's not as absorptive, I don't think, and not as heavily blooded as your intestines would be, especially your small intestine where almost all of this really initial contact with your food is. And you know, you have a lot of blood, it transfers a lot of enzymes and bacteria and all kinds of stuff. I mean, very, very, very important to have good digestion and that's where it happens primarily in the small intestine. Okay, let's just go with this again. Vermilion Cliffs, this is somewhere in the intestinal uh, digestive system, somewhere, I don't know where. But whenever you see a ton of red, that's a lot of red blood. And this is a membrane. And what that is doing is it's, it's transferring stuff from the membrane into the blood or from the blood into the membrane area. And probably both ways, because you have a lot of enzymes to break down food, and they also protect this layer from invasion. That's what bacteria and enzymes do. Very, very important. All right, you saw this, and this is the connective tissue. Let me show you what it looks like in an anatomical shot. All right, this is what these little lines are. They're connective tissue. And then the muscle, which is the red stuff, pulls in and out. But the connective tissue holds you together. Now remember this line here. This is important. It's called a linea alba. You don't all hear that often. <laughs> or you don't hear about the hunter's line either. The hunter's line, they used to cut, cut a, they call it a hunter's line. But it's anatomical name is linea alba. It separates you from one side from the other. And the way that line is formed is when you are being born, all right, you you come out, you're, you're starting to develop in the womb. You come out at a certain number of cells, you're, you're a ball. And at a certain number of cells, it inverts, it's called, and it sinks inside like that, wraps around, and seals right here. And that's the hunter's line.
and then inside there all your organs form. So it wraps around and seals right like that. And then when you die in a mud fossil condition, it splits back open again. I can show that in graphic detail and it's going to be with a vagina because it's very easy to see and it will prove that this, these caves are vaginas, not just a, you know some oddball cave. You see that? You know, pretty much most people know what a vagina is. <laughs> I would hope. First of all, that is the Alinea alba. That little tiny, you see that very, very thin line there? That's the Alinea alba. It just cracks right open when you are in a mud fossil condition. The rest of it is quite obviously anatomically exact for a vagina. The next thing is that it's red and pink and all that stuff because there's still a lot of blood flow and that's why all this green moss is growing. It grows on blood. And this, my friends, is a coffin birth. Look at that face right there. Take your time. Take your time. You see the side here is all bowed out. This is nice and smooth. That's what it should be. This is a coffin birth and it may be a double or two babies. But this one, absolutely no question whatsoever. That one. Look at the face on it. Now, what is this little ripply looking stuff here? That is the tissue being ripped out as the baby's trying to be forced out through the wall of the vagina. That is actually the same tissue as this, only it's pushed out. There's his face. This is, I believe, is his arm and his shoulder right here. Yeah. Now, there, this could be another one down here. I don't see why there's any reason for that bump to be there other than another baby. I could be wrong. Other than that, this is the Tracian womb cave. All right, and it's, I mean, you know, they knew what it was, but we call it some carved artifact. Now, I believe this is in Sonoma, and it's what they call it is the birthing cave. <laughs> if you want to get fertile, you're supposed to go in there. I'm not kidding you. I believe that's the story. There's the hunter's line, the linea alba. And that is a vagina. This is the first known breech birth of a fully clothed person <laughs> coming out of a vagina. Now, I don't want to give you the wrong impression. There was, there was giant men, too. <laughs> I mean, there's a little person standing there. That uh, well, certainly looks like what it is to me. Now, they not only had... Christians or circumcised people, they had uh, pagans back then too that were, you know, fairly good size. <laughs> and, you know, they made good use of this. You've heard a story about there was an old man who lived in a penis. I'm sure you've heard that song. Okay, now I got to get back to my light research. I was doing all this light research. As soon as I got this picture, it freaked it, This thing just freaked me right out. When I started looking at all of the sarcomeres and you know it has exactly the plumbing and there's a ton of plumbing that goes along with this you see this this is arterial I mean a vein I'm sure and this is obviously the red is arterial and the dark is vein the vein is used up blood the really bright has that extra oxygen and it gives it a real glow okay so like I said quickie du jour I got to go back to my light research all kinds of things happen in this realm. Listen to this, look. The universe shouldn't exist according to CERN. <laughs> the universe shouldn't exist, scientists say, after finding bizarre behavior of antimatter. This is what I'm doing now. It, it, it's amazing what has been missed and just totally overlooked. There's no way to dismiss it, to, to miss it. There's only way to dismiss it. You can't miss, you can only dismiss.